welcome back to my channel if you've been here before and welcome if it's your first time here i tried to do a little like vlog before this because i read heartless by merce meyer over the weekend and i wanted to like show like you know what i was doing and just like vlog a little bit but i kind of suck at vlogging i'll get better i'll get there <laughs> so yeah the beginning might not be that interesting but that's fine I had my daughter, after I finished the last book, pick out a new book for me. I just held three books out for her and whichever one she picked up and like tried to run away with, that's the one I read and it just so happened to be this one which like I was hoping for because I wanted to read it so bad and so now I've read it and I'm just like, for non-spoiler people, I will say that I didn't think that I was going to rate this book very high in the beginning because the pacing starts off really really slow like for like the first like third of the book nothing really happens and you're just kind of waiting to find out okay so why do people love this book so much if nothing happens and then you get to the second third and you're just like oh my gosh <sighs> this book just like takes your heart and like holds it out to you and then just like crushes it in front of you and you just get angry and sad and upset it's just like a bunch of emotions you're just like Ugh. you know how it's gonna end because it's for those of you who don't know it's an Alice in Wonderland retelling from the side of the Queen of Hearts so it's how she became the Queen of Hearts like before Alice before any of this how she got to where she is so you know how it's gonna end you know it's gonna end with her being the Queen of Hearts this terrible ruler who cuts people's heads off but like you still have faith like marissa meyer gives you faith you're just like maybe not like maybe like maybe it'll be okay and then no and you're just like <sighs> for some reason your heart is just broken even though you already knew but like you're still just like why why is this happening i'm trying to like give you guys non-spoilers okay so the characters cast who is the main character who's supposed to become the queen of hearts who does become the queen of hearts just like loves to bake and like everything she's making sounds amazing like it sounds so good i was just like oh my gosh it made me hungry but she's such a sweetheart in the beginning and i just like love that about her and of course by the end she changes but like she just was so genuine and so passionate but there was also a side of her that like was kind of weak to me like she just did not want to stand up to her parents like she felt like she couldn't stand up to her parents and it's kind of like a victorian society so like women are supposed to be married off basically and like she just kind of felt like she didn't really have a choice like she's supposed to marry the king again these are really not spoilers it all happens fairly quickly you find out pretty quickly so throughout the book she's just kind of like in debate with herself like she knows she doesn't want to be the queen but at the same time she doesn't know how to stand up to her parents to make her dream come true like she just doesn't know what to do essentially and she seems kind of weak in the sense that she doesn't really fight like there's really like no fight before i say anything let me make sure that it's written in here yeah okay so there's really no fight like Jess is the love interest in this book and he's the court joker and she like cares for him and it's kind of insta lovey because like almost the moment be like before they even see each other she has this dream about him and then here he is and it's just kind of like you know but like it makes sense it's wonderland honestly so they start having this kind of relationship what that's not really a relationship because they can't really be in a relationship because she's supposed to marry the king and she's kind of like not leading him on but like she wants to be with him but she knows her parents will never approve of it and in my opinion i already knew she was never going to stand up to her parents so it makes her look weak and kind of like <sighs> this is non-spoilers like i'll just say she's a little bit weak in some cases so yeah then we have marianne who's her maid who i loved their best friend relationship i won't say what i want to say because it's a spoiler but i do love their best friend relationship and i think that that's cute hated her parents could not like them any less honestly they're just terrible they're just bad i'm just saying they're bad 
they're awful parents they don't care what she wants they just care about her being queen and for what just so they can say they have a daughter who's queen like it's so freaking stupid oh my gosh like i just want you to be queen you're supposed to be queen how dare you not want to be queen because she doesn't like okay cheshire was in this and i don't know if i'm saying that right but like oh my gosh guys cheshire was so cool in this the caterpillar is also in this and he was like dull but like cheshire was awesome in this jess the love interest was oh my gosh i think i fell in love with him like he was just so cute he was like i just loved him he had a like not pet but a friend called raven and there's a lot of rhyming from edgar Allan poe in here it's like the raven says nevermore a lot which is from the poem the raven by edgar Allan poe and you know there's a quote from there about knocking at the chamber door which again is from edgar Allan poe which i thought was really intriguing to include that in the whole alice in wonderland type world i i was like interested in that i was like okay well that's cool and it really was it was a very interesting concept to include in there so i liked that i thought that was so nice the king really doesn't even need to be mentioned because he was just dull and idiotic and like he shouldn't have been king like he should have probably been a joker because he was just an idiot but yeah so that's it for characters the overall plot of the story was just like i said in the beginning it was slow but then like it just pulls at your heartstrings and it picks up and you're just like oh my gosh and then like it just oh my gosh i just don't even know what to say I'm just gonna end the spoiler, the non-spoilery section here because I gotta get into my spoiler thoughts. I suck at non-spoilers and I'm so sorry, but I rated this book five out of five stars. Like when I finished this book, I was just like, oh, I went to sleep thinking about it. I woke up thinking about it. I thought about writing an Alice in Wonderland short story, like with Kath. I just, Marissa Meyer, just, she just did the thing, guys. She just did the thing and she did it so well. And I was just, I was, uh, it was beautiful. Five out of five stars. Like, I would read it again in a heartbeat. It was so freaking good. But, like, I don't know if I can read it again because my heart still hurts. It just, I can't. Anyway, I got tabs for you spoilery people. So I'll give you non-spoilery people a second to hop off. Let's discuss, guys. I have tabs, like I said, but I probably won't even, like, really look at them but as you see I opened the book so obviously I'm looking now so from the beginning I knew there was something wrong with Peter and there was something wrong with his wife like his wife was so weird and there was a part of me that was like she must be the Jabberwock because she is so strange and I was right and I'm just skimming my markers so I make sure that I don't miss anything even though I already know what I want to talk about. But yeah, she was so weird. And I was like, okay, something's wrong with this girl. Like, she has to be the Jabberwock. But I was like, that doesn't make any sense. How has a person become the Jabberwock? And it was so unusual. And because I've never read Alice in Wonderland, I've only seen, like, the non-animated adaptation with Johnny Depp. I was just kind of like, a person can't be the Jabberwock but then the Jabberwock talks but then it's Alice in Wonderland so like majority of the animals talk so you know I was just like ah this can't be so I will say what did kind of get me was that I thought I wasn't gonna like this book because I felt like from the non-animated adaptation of Alice in Wonderland it was like so different to me like there were characters in it from Alice in Wonderland, obviously. It was whimsical and odd and mad, just like Alice in Wonderland. But I thought it strayed a little too far from the story that like I remember seeing. But of course, I was wrong, guys. I was wrong. But like, if you get that feeling and you're like me, keep reading, because man, this book is freaking amazing. I'm just saying. So let's just talk about Jess and Kat, because Cheshire is in here too. And I like that Cheshire is so sarcastic and just real about things. Like he knew from the jump, I feel like he knew from the jump where Kath was gonna end up. And Haley in Bookland says this in her review. But like, he just knew that she was not about to stand up to her parents. She was not about to go be with Jess. Like that wasn't about to happen. 
So her and Jess' relationship is super insta-lovey, but like, how can you not love it? First of all, Jess, freaking adorable. Like, he is so cute. And his little Raven friend, the Edgar Allan Poe quoting Raven, was just the icing on the cake. Like, Jess, oh my gosh, you guys. And what's crazy is, like, when I saw Haley and Bookland's video, she was completely right when she said they really didn't have much time together. So how the heck did I fall in love with Jess? And like the short, like, how many pages is this book? Like 449 pages that this book is. How did I fall in love with him? Because like, they really don't spend much time together. And when they do, it's like glimpses at what their relationship could be. But like, I just loved him. And like, he was my favorite character. Like, forget Kath, like she was all right. But like, Jess, Jess was where it was at. So the Hatta, that was a character I had a hard time with. Like, I was just like, this is not Hatta. Like, this is not, he's not like this. This is not how he is. And so it kind of frustrated me in the beginning, but like, then when he went mad at the very end, I was like, okay, yeah, there's, there's Hatta. So it made sense because he wasn't mad yet. And then you find out he was in love with Jess and it's just like, oh my gosh, why? like it makes so much sense. But he was really just ignorant to Catherine and you find out that he was the one that caused all this stuff to happen and it's just like, oh, so many connections, oh. And I love that he had like the mad tea party. I thought that was such a nice aspect to put in there and I thought that it sounded so Wonderland-like because, you know, Alice in Wonderland, you already know the tea party is like a really important scene and so I really loved that. I loved that part. I thought it was so awesome. And like Kath, I loved that in that part she cared about people. Like she ran back to save the turtle. The lion died, but and you know, it's kind of like dismissed too that he died, but whatever. Like she went back to save the turtle and I thought that was so cute. And I was really trying to figure out how she becomes the queen of hearts because she's so sweet, but like she has no backbone. And that was the problem. I feel like that's how she became the queen of hearts because her having no backbone essentially was the reason that all this stuff happened like she just let her parents kind of decide things for her like she refused to fight she was scared to be disowned and like i can understand because she couldn't open her shop after being disowned she couldn't do so much but like is love not worth it to you because in the end like look where you ended up because you had no backbone like really i feel as though and i can't remember whose video i was watching you know what? we'll just get we'll get there i was talking about something else and i just completely went off track anywho like i said the queen the king was a bumbling idiot her parents were god awful and what i really want to talk about is just the end like let's just let's just talk about the end so somebody said that in the end they were upset that nobody understood Marianne, that if your best friend had run off with some stranger, that of course you would tell an adult that, oh yeah, she ran off with some stranger, blah, blah, blah. And I like sat and thought about this for like a good while because I was just like, would I? Would I though? Here's my theory. And I don't really know how old Catherine is. Like it, I don't know if it was mentioned and I just missed it but I have no clue how old she is. But here's my thing. She's old enough to get married, right? I'm not about to stalk my best friend and go tell her parents something. Like, she's off with some guy. Like, okay, first of all, she told you that in confidence that she went out to the tea party and you, you literally said she talks about Jess like she's in love with him. Then you go and turn in, basically turn him in and say that he snuck her out when you knew what the repercussions would be like. You knew she would never be able to have anything with Jess if you said this because it was gonna look like he took her against her will like you freaking knew it and you still did it okay look I don't care I don't care Marianne mm, girl here's the thing I knew from the jump that she was gonna tell like as soon as Kath told her I was like oh she finna tell like I didn't know when or how but I was like she about to tell what Kath went out and did and she did and literally I could not disagree more with that like Kath was injured he took her to save her like he took her somewhere where she could get help obviously no one knew this but like she was gone for like two hours like say something and she's been gone for like maybe like four or five hours but like it was two hours and within that two hours Marianne freaking snitched on her 
and I have a problem. I am so pissed about it and I don't care. Like, Marianne, you are dismissed. Girl, bye. Okay, bye. Look, none of this would have happened. One, if Kath had a backbone and two, if Marianne wasn't a freaking snitch. Like, I have done some scandalous things in my life and I feel like my best friends have never snitched on me, nor would they ever snitch on me. Like, if I tell you something in confidence, don't be going around telling other people what I told you, Marianne, okay? Don't be Marianne in. I'm going to make that a quote. Don't be a Marianne, okay? Like, the ending of this book just broke me. And what pissed me off, too, which somebody else said in a comment, that was that she knew what was going to happen if she went back. Like, they literally told her, I think it was like murder, martyr monarch mad they told her what was gonna happen if she went back and she still freaking went back for marianne's dumb behind and again marianne you caused like this would have never happened had you stayed your butt at home like kath had it all handled she was gonna go to chess and be a completely different person and have fun with Jess and be in love and all this other stuff. And you freaking ruined it, Marianne, because you had to go get in trouble and she tried to save you. And that's how the love of her life died, okay? It's your freaking fault. Like, uh, I don't want to put it all on Marianne because it's Kath's fault too. Like, Kath, it is your fault too that you you went back like i'm not saying you should have left her but you literally have a dialogue after this that says i should have let marianne die i'm just saying like if you were gonna not be friends with her anyway after you should have just left like you wouldn't have known what would have happened i'm just... the ending of this book just hurts my heart so bad especially because the sisters told them what was gonna happen if they went back and they still went back. And it was really Kath's fault too. Kath and Marion. And also Jess. Because he went back to save her. But I can't be mad at Jess because Jess is bae. And Jess went back because he knew that she could get the, the vocal sword out of his hat and kill the Jabberwock. And Peter Peter. Mmm. Uh, mmm. I understand she killed his wife, but he treated his wife like crap anyway, so why are you mad? Like, you treated her like dirt, and you're gonna sit here and act like you're upset? Boy, bye. Honestly? Bye. <sighs> there was something else I wanted to talk about, too, and, like, my mind is just, like, not working. Oh, so somebody said that Kath switched up too quick. Like, she was caring and all this stuff, and then she switched up way too quick. One in Peter Peter's head cut off, which that rhyme was lit, too. Just saying. So here's my thoughts on that. I think that the switch up was logical because... Kath, like I said, had no backbone. And because she had no backbone, all of this other stuff ended up happening as a result. Because if from the beginning, she had a backbone and she said, look, I don't want to marry the king. I'm not, about, I'm not about to court the king. And that she wanted to be with Jess or just let her parents disown her and be with Jess and go off to chess like they were going to do anyway, then none of this would have happened. And I think that after he died first of all understand something like you can't picture the person you love getting their head cut off literally head cut off right in front of you you can't like i can't i don't even want to so for you to say oh she switched up too quick just i get somebody she loved died but that doesn't make sense no mm -mm. listen if somebody you love's head their entire head like got cut off with an axe right in front of you you finna switch up like that because that would hurt you to your core. Like, that would destroy you. Kath was destroyed. And that is when she got her backbone because she realized that if she'd have never came back, none of that would have happened. If she'd never gone to get Marianne, Jess would still be alive. Like, if she hadn't done certain things, if she had a freaking backbone then none of this would have happened. And when she realized that, she started to, this is just my theory, she blamed herself as well as Marianne 
And so what happened was she became this like terrible person because she was like, nobody's ever about to hurt me again. Nobody's ever going to take advantage of me again. I'm my own person. I'm going to make sure that this person suffers because she could have made sure her and Jess got together. Like there's only so much a person can do to keep you from somebody. She didn't. So now because he's passed away in honor of him, she's going to make sure she has a freaking backbone and she's going to take care of what needs to be taken care of. She's going to get her darn revenge. You'd want revenge too. Be honest with yourself. Be honest now. Because you know you would. So I feel like her switch really wasn't that, like, it wasn't that sudden. Like, it, if, if I was in her position, I would want some freaking revenge. I don't know if I'd want the guy's head cut off, but that's what she wanted. And when she traded her heart for it, was that dumb? Yes. But imagine how much pain she was in. And from what I'm understanding of the whole taking her heart thing, she was no longer in pain when they took her heart. She couldn't feel. That's the whole purpose of the heart, feeling things. She couldn't feel the pain anymore. And if you were in that much pain and you were suffering that much, you would want that pain to be taken away. So the sisters took that away and in return left her empty with nothing but revenge in her mind and anger. And that's how she became this tyrannical leader because now she got, she don't have feelings when you don't have feelings nothing really matters to you like people aren't people anymore see what i'm getting at now people said that she treated marianne like dirt and yes she treated marianne like dirt after this but at the same time what do you expect i'm just saying because if you go through the scenario it's Mar part marianne's fault it's part kath's fault and if you're looking for somebody to place the blame on, it's much easier to place the blame on somebody else than yourself. But we already know Kath was placing part blame on herself, but she was also placing blame on Marianne. And if your loved one got their head cut off because of your best friend, you're going to hate that person. You're going to hate them. And she hated Marianne when this was all over. So I don't think that her being a terrible person to Marianne like, I, I understand because she hated Marianne when this was all over. I understand they were best friends. But by the time this was said and done, she freaking hated her. Like, when you hate someone, you don't care. You don't care. I understand Marianne lost her job and everything. But like I said, Kath was done caring. And that's the whole point. You see what I'm getting at. So, overall... I really love this book. Like, this book gave me all the feels, and I wish Jess was still alive. I know it's not a real, but, like, my baby. Okay, let me stop. Alrighty, guys. So, like, that's the end of my spoilery discussion of this book. I rated it five stars. I freaking loved it. Like, I loved it. My heart still hurts. I'm not about to cry. I'm very emotional, but I'm not about to cry. Okay. So thank you guys so much for watching this video slash reading vlog. And if you like this video, please leave a like down below, comment and subscribe to this channel. I post new videos two to three times a week. And if you haven't, go read Heartless by Marissa Meyer. Just do it. All right. Bye, guys.